mentioned gentrification in, with some slightly negative connotations, and I, I wondered if you've ever looked at it from the other side, which is that if your family was still in that forty thousand dollar home, it's now worth three and a half or four million dollars. Right. Let me let me let, let me, me, let, me not, let me just kill you right now. Okay, okay. <laughs> go for it. Let me because there was some bullshit article in the New York Times saying the good of gentrification. I don't believe that. That's, here's the thing. I grew up here in Fort Greene. I grew up here in New York. It's changed. And why does it take the influx of white New Yorkers in the South Bronx, in Harlem, in Bed-Stuy, in Crown Heights for the facilities to get better? The garbage was a pickup every month of the day. When I, when I lived at 180 Wash, 165 Washington Park, PS20 was not good. PS11, Rothschild, 294. So why, 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 the police went around. When you see white mothers push their babies in strollers three o'clock in the morning to 125th Street, that must tell you something. And, and I don't dispute that. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> And even more. Let me kill you some more. I'm coming back. <laughs> can, can I talk about that? No, not yet. Not not yet. yet. <laughs> and then comes the motherfucking Christopher Columbus syndrome. You can't discover this. We've been here. You just can't come and book us. The new inhibitors said the drums are loud. My father, the great jazz musician, the Liberty bought a house in 19 motherfucking 68, and the motherfucking people moved the next year and called the cops my father. He's not even playing the lead, he's even playing electric bass. It's acoustic. <laughs> oh, we, we, we bought the motherfucking house in 1960, motherfucking eight. And now, you called the cops in 2013? Get the fuck out of here. Nah, you can't do that. You just can't come to the neighborhood and start bogarting and say, like your motherfucking Columbus, and, and kill off the Native Americans. You can't do that. What they do in Brazil, what they get to the indigenous people. You have to come with respect. There's a culture, there's people. You just can't move and start hearing another thing. When Michael Jackson died, they wanted to have a party for a motherfucking Fort Greene Park. And all of a sudden, the white people in Fort Greene said, wait a minute. We can't have black people having a party for Michael Jackson to celebrate his life. Who's coming to the neighborhood? Literally a lot of garbage. Garbage. Have you seen Fort Greene Park in the morning? It's like the motherfucking West, Westminster Dog Show. There's 20,000 dogs running around. Whoa. So we had to move into public park. I mean, they just moved in the neighborhood. You just can't come in bow garden. I'm for democracy and let everybody live, but you gotta have some respect. You just can't come in where people have a culture that's been laid down for uh, generations and you come and now she gotta change because you're here? Get the fuck out of here. Can't do that. So what's good about I agree with you. I agree with and everything. Then, I agree with everything. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. And then, you, oh, so what happens? So you talk about the people whose property changed, but what about the people who are renting? They can't afford it anymore. I, I agree with you. You can't, can't afford it. You can't afford it. People want to live in Fort Green. People want to live in Clinton Hill. The people who live on the lower east side, they moved to Williamsburg, they came from they came before a fucking one of fucking Williamsburg, now because of motherfucking hipsters. And now, what are they, they, they called Bushwick now? West, what's the word? West, East Williamsburg. That's another thing, motherfucking. <laughs> These real estate motherfuckers are changing names. <laughs> Stack the Heights. They like the 110th, the 125th. There's another name for Harlem. What is it? Uh, what? Morningside Heights. What is it? Morningside Heights. No, no, not Morningside Heights. There's a new. There's a new. Wow. wow. And we 
hit the crystal ball and motherfucker do the right thing with John Snapper's character. When he rolled his bike over, uh, bucking out sneaker. I wrote that strip in 1988. He was the first one. How can I walk down Brooklyn with a Larry Bird jersey on? I can't do that. Not a bad start. So, look. You might say, well, there's more police protection. <laughs> the public schools are better. Why are the public schools better? First of all, everybody can't afford, even if you have money, it's too hard. Even if, even if you have money, it's hard to get the kids into private school. People, everybody wants to go to St. Anne's. You can't get to St. Anne's. You can't get into Friends. What's the other one? Pop. Yeah, but over in Brooklyn Heights, it's Packer. 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 So, if you can't get the child there into there, I mean, it's crazy. There's a, a, a business now where people, you pay. People don't even have kids yet, and they're taking this course how to interview to get your kid into private school. I'm not lying. So if you can't get your kid into private school if you're white here, and you can't afford it, what's the next best thing? All right, now we're gonna go to public schools. So why did it take this great influx of white people to get the schools better? Why is there more police protection in Ben Stein Hall now? Why is the government being picked up more regularly? We've been here. It wasn't in Apple services before. All right, go ahead. <laughs> let me see you come I, back I, to that. I, I agree with every single thing you said. My soul, no, no, my, no, 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 my one sole point, though, is wealth creation in the African-American community, something that we've traditionally been locked out of. You bought a house in the ghetto, and three generations, the house was worth nothing in the ghetto. So for those homeowners that did stick in through, through Bed-Stuy, my parents moved in, it was all Jewish when they moved in, so I've seen it through everything. So for those people that did stick in, now we have an opportunity for wealth creation that, is, that we've been locked out of. So now, while that not, may not help the renters, and everything you said was absolutely true, what about that one aspect of wealth creation for people that have paid those taxes, that fought to keep the crime down on their blocks, and all the other things they did to maintain it? Because the white folks are not moving back because it's the ghetto. They're moving back because they are beautiful blocks full of beautiful brownstones that have been well maintained by people of color. Yes, but here's the thing. To deflate your argument, sir. The people you're talking about are not a great number. Number one, a lot of these people have not kept their taxes. So they can't afford to keep the house. Number two, when these real estate guys come around and open a suitcase with a bunch of money, they're gonna sell it. Many of these people you're talking about are elderly. And if they get the money, it, a lot of money is a lot further down south. Black people buy droves in New York City. It's called reverse migration. They're moving to Atlanta. With North Carolina, they got a house, they got a lawn, they got a backyard, they less taxes. And so, I mean, New York City is a hard place. And so, if you, you worked all your life and you're retired, who, they're selling their houses. And I don't blame them. I can't say to them, you can't sell your house. They're like, fuck you, Spike. You know what? And rightfully so, I would never say that, but. You have to do some research and look at the numbers. The population, the black American population in New York City is going down. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's going down. This is reverse, reverse migration. And what we have is that, and it's something that Blasio is going to, I don't know, man, you can't get the snow off the streets, but still. <laughs> what we need, we need affordable houses for everybody. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. can't afford I mean, here's the thing. The further away from Manhattan, Brooklyn Heights is the most expensive neighborhood. Then you got Park Slope, Fort Green, Cabo Hill, Clint Hill, and then, you know, it, 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 it works like this. The rents get cheaper the further you go away from Brooklyn. And the reality is, 
after the sand I'm calling out, it's the motherfucking Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> so, where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go? Puerto Rico, same thing. A lot of Puerto Ricans are moving like the Bucks County. Or moving back to Puerto Rico. You can't, people can't afford to live here anymore. And people can't afford to live, then it's gonna be the young artists like you. I mean, it used to be a time when you could get, you could, $200 a month to get by. You can't do that anymore. And so if New York City's not affordable, then the great art that we have is not gonna be here. Because people can't afford it. So, I'm not, I know what you're saying, but I, I don't see a lot of good coming from gentrification for the people, for those people who live in those, in those neighborhoods. Look at a new name for the South Bronx now, what do you call it? What? So bro. So bro? <laughs> it's a scam. There's some shenanigans, trickery, people being bamboozled, let us string, run them up. Run them up. <laughs> Is 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 you know and and what's what they call West uh, Bushwick now? East Williamsburg. East Williamsburg. <laughs> <laughs> and it starts around Rochester now and Chelsea. It's, it's crossed Broadway. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yes. Hi, my name is Jessica Eason. Uh,